So you got friends coming in town, families visiting you, you've been on X diet for X amount of days, you don't want to break, what are you going to do? Well, welcome to Lion Diet week 7 out of the 100 days. So this past week I had people visiting. We had a big conference with a lot of good speakers, a lot of great information. It was gonna be a super, super busy weekend. We were gonna be getting up early, we were gonna be going to sleep late, we were gonna be a lot of talking, a lot of absorbing, a lot of doing everything. A lot of dinners, a lot of outings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How am I gonna maintain my lion diet adherence, my OMAD adherence? What am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? Well, right before this week started, or rather right before my first guest got here, I was two weeks in. Two weeks of full OMAD, two weeks of full one meal a day, two pound per week calorie deficit eating, successfully completed. Yeah. Friends get here Wednesday. I had already eaten my meal for the day. My buddy's like, hey, I just landed. I'm starving. I've been traveling all day. Awesome. Let's go get you some food, dude. We took a walk. We went and got tacos. He was super hungry. They were beautiful tacos. I helped him out, decide which kind he wanted to get. They were birria tacos, which I freaking love because I'm from Mexico. My mother's from Mexico. My family's from Mexico. Do I look Mexican to you guys? Because guess what? I am a Mexican. Mexican citizen. People say, hey man, I'm Mexican too. I'm also Mexican, the, the adjective, but I'm also a Mexican, the noun. So we went and got tacos. He got the birria tacos. They were delicious. He got a bowl as well. He's like, man, you're not hungry? I was like, nah, I'm good, dude. I already ate my meal for the day. So in that first moment, did I want to eat with my friend? Of course. Did I love seeing the birria and was that like evoking some emotional response from me? Yeah, a little bit, but I had the goal in mind. You know, I thought about how is this going to serve me? It's not. It's not on my diet. You know, I'm almost halfway through my line diet. I was almost 50 days in on that day. I'm, I'm almost there. Like, man, you can't, why would you give into this? So for me, there was really no thought in that moment because, you know, there's chips and all these other vegetables and whatnots. It was a pretty easy decision. I was just enjoying the company with my friend, being present there in the moment and letting him get his fill. So that was great. The next day, what was going on? Well, we had a full day of conference and the next day, the day after that, we had another full day of conference. Before this conference kicked off, we talk about preparedness and why preparedness is key for everybody, for any of us. Because again, remember, we do not rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the strengths of our systems. So whenever people ask me, what do you do, Jake? What do you do, Jake? I freaking plan, man. I prepare. I put that marine mentality back on and prepare, prepare, prepare. Plan for the mission, prepare for battle, execute. Plan for the mission, prepare for battle, execute. So how did I plan for the mission? Once we got the schedule of events for this weekend's mastermind, I reached out to the hosts and I asked, what will be on the menus? What will the food be served? When were, what is the, you know, all that. Lunch and dinner and everything. Hey, you guys, do you mind providing um, the, yeah, of course, man, no problem. All you gotta do is ask. So many people are oftentimes afraid to ask, how is the food prepared? Do you cook it in any type of oil? Are there seed oils? Are there vegetable oils? Are there, you know, GMOs? Or is everything a whole actual real ingredient? Is this organic? Is it inorganic? Is it kosher? Is it halal? Many people are just afraid to ask. Just ask. It's okay. Even if they bite your head off, they're like, all right, well, at least I tried. In this case, I asked for the menu. They gave me the menu of all the days, what times we were eating, exactly what was going to be there. Perfect. So what did I do? Prepared for battle. I made, for that first day, a big, like, pound and a half freaking ribeye at home. Cooked it the day before. That way, it marinated in its own juices all night overnight. The next day, brought it in my glass container, and I ate it for breakfast at the first day uh, of our event. Everybody there was like, man, dude, you brought your own food. Yeah, sure, I wanted to, you know, this is what I wanted to eat. Some people might poke at you. Some people might ask you questions. So what? It's all good. As long as you're doing what, you, what, what makes you happy and what you're confident and standing behind with, with honesty and pride, there's no shame in that. There's no reason to cower. There's no reason to not be, you know, open about it. So, yeah, like some people give you some looks. I get it all the time. Man, that guy really brought his own food. Yeah, so what? The sun still came up the next day. It still rained two days later when the weatherman said it would. Didn't matter. So I felt great. 
had that nice big fatty steak. I was solid all throughout the day. And then we had a dinner that night back at the hotel. So later, so I get to the hotel with the friends, with the boys. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to eat anymore. I'm fine. And then I see that they had plain flank steak, no spice, no seasoning, no sauce, no oil, nothing. Just flank steak shredded with salt. And I was like, well, it's still lion diet. I have been on this one meal a day for two weeks now in a calorie deficit and I've been losing the weight exactly like I calculated two pounds per week. So my shred is working perfectly. Technically, I could give myself a refeed and add in some calories and then utilize those calories once everybody leaves. And that's what I did. So I did not break the diet. I did step out of my OMAD and I indulged on some of that flank steak and man, it was freaking awesome. So could some people say that's breaking something? Maybe. Did I break the OMAD? Yeah. But did that take away the other 14 days of OMAD calorie deficit that I did make? No. Did I break my lion diet? No. Was I still at day 45 lion diet out of 100 days at this point? Yes. So the main mission, the macro mission, the big mission is the lion diet 100 days. The freaking white whale I'm trying to wrangle amidst this 100 day lion diet was my OMAD. So I had my two weeks in the bag of one meal a day, two pound per week calorie deficit. Friends came in town. I brought my steak to eat that day for breakfast the first day. And then we were at dinner, saw the flank steak. And I was like, yeah, I can take this refeed. No problem. So I did. I acted honestly. I acted openly. I acted with confidence. I had no remorse, no regret about it. As long as you can do that, you're gravy, baby. It's when you go against your conscience, when you act incongruently with your conscience and you know it's not what you should be doing and you've got regret towing on you like a freaking guideline that it is because whoosh, it is, that's when you're in the wrong. So if something makes you feel guilty eating it or if you're having nerves or anxiety before doing something because you know it's not going to fit the narrative of what you're trying to do, whether it's gain weight, lose weight, maintain, just abstain or otherwise, whatever the mission, don't freaking do it. It's that simple. In that moment is a thing called spontaneous right action. And it's your ability to choose what you know to be right or not choose what you know to be wrong. That's it. Spontaneous right action. Remember that, write that down. So for me in that moment, spontaneous right action, I'm still in the lion diet. I'm not deviating from that mission. I am willfully aware that I am no longer going to be omatting today and that this will be utilized as a refeed and thus it'll still keep me moving forward. Good to go. And I'm going to enjoy the time with my friends. That was a win-win for me. Go to the next day, Friday. I brought homemade jerky for breakfast that day, which was awesome. Everybody was like, wow, where'd you get that? I didn't see it on a buffet. I brought it. <laughs> and then um, we had dinner later that night, sunset dinner out on the uh, on the, on the water, Smith and Walensky, it was beautiful. A couple of friends of mine had just gotten engaged, didn't even realize that. They showed up to dinner. I invited them to come meet us. And she walks in and goes, guys, guess what happened? Amazing. And I had a beautiful steak watching the harbor and the sunset with my friends. Again, I did break my OMAD, but I did not break my lion diet. And I did it willfully. I did it with confidence. I did it with happiness, with joy, with wholesomeness, with real honesty, with no remorse. Again, as long as that is the guide or the criterion, you're good to go. It's not about trying to be miserable and like, yeah, I kept to this and I was totally miserable. Da, 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 da. Like, no, that's bullshit. That's not sustainable. And anybody tells you to do that is just destroying your experience with eating. Eating should be a lovely, lovely, beautiful thing. It's an essential part of life. But too often, most of us out there, out there and everywhere else live to eat rather than eat to live. I eat to live. I love to eat, but I don't live to eat. So remember that. Do it honestly, do it with a full heart, do it with happiness, do it without regret, and you're not gonna go wrong. So I did break my OMAD, I did not break my lion diet. So there I was, day 46, still rolling. Now we're going into Saturday over the weekend. So just like researching the menu before the mastermind events, we researched the restaurant. Hey, we're going to a steakhouse. I know I'm good to go. I asked the waiter, how's the steak prepared? Is it cooked in any oil? Is it, does it have butter? Because even right now, no butter, lion diet. So I said, please make sure there's no oil, no butter, nothing on the steak, nothing. 
just salt. Not even pepper, because pepper's not on the, on the list either, because pepper is a corn. Pepper's not carnivore. Pepper's definitely not lion. So nothing. So I just asked ahead of time about the food menu the first day. I asked ahead of time at the restaurant. I even asked the waiter to double confirm. And then Saturday, we did it again. Didn't bring any food. We were having our own day Saturday. Went to, for some burgers there at the Fountain Blue Hotel. The waitress was so accommodating, very, very nice and polite. Hey, would you mind if I got the burger with just the burger, just the patty, none of the adorn, uh, accoutrement or, uh, or the, ex not accessories, I, I can't even think of the word right now, but none of the other things that come with the burger, none of the dressings, just salt in the patty. Yeah, no problem. Okay, perfect. I got that. Buddy and I then went for another lunch at another burger spot, got the same thing, more burger patties with nothing on them. And then we met friends even again later that night. So three meals in the day on Saturday, all clean, all lion diet, all just beef and salt and no complaints. Why? Because we researched beforehand. What were we talking about at the beginning? Remember, plan ahead, prepare for battle and execute. Plan ahead, prepare for battle and execute. And that's what I did each one of those times. Not five minutes before, but in advance, because if you're trying to scramble and do all that, your window's closing, your fallibility window is opening, your window of probability of, ex of execution, of completion, of successfully completing the mission is closing, and the fallibility window is opening. So plan ahead, prepare for battle, and execute. So each one of those places I had planned ahead, or I knew before, I had familiarity that I'd been there. I know, you know what I was doing. I didn't get myself into a situation where I'd didn't have anything to do, right? Or I was, in, uh, I was compromised or overly compromised. What happens if that happens? Well, guess what? You don't have to eat. Oh my God, I said it. Oh my God, he said it. That's right, you don't have to eat. And I tell my clients this all the time. That is an option to sit there at a dinner, at a meal and not freaking eat. If there's something, if there's nothing on the menu, that fits what you're needing to eat at your diet, like whether, you know, hey, if I'm a vegan and I'm, a, and I'm at a steakhouse, nobody bats an eye when I say, hey, I'm a vegan and I'm at a steakhouse, because I've done it when I was a vegan. When I'm a vegetarian and I'm at the steakhouse and nobody bats an eye and says, I'm just having this because I'm a vegetarian, because I've done it. Or when I'm trying to do whatever, the, the discipline or whatever the diet or whatever the abstinence, people don't seem to mind when you're doing it, but God forbid you don't eat at all it can be kind of weird to those around you. But just say you already ate, big deal. Or just say you're not hungry, big freaking deal. Just be you, do it for the reasons that you want to do, that you know why you're doing what you're doing. You don't have to appease anybody else's sensibility, okay? So, plan ahead, prepare for battle, execute. That's how you do it. And then it's just about maintaining your principles and living in congruence with your conscience. Is it that big of a deal? If it matters to you, it is. So when people say, how do you stay you know, to the macros on a trip? How do you keep your discipline amongst friends? Because it matters to me. It matters. And if it matters to you, you won't fail either.